How do I get in front of the cameras? I start. Hey everybody, welcome to Tuesday's Fish Talk Live. Go ahead and share this out, share this into your group, share this on your personal page. Let's see if we can get 100 viewers tonight. live on YouTube and we're streaming live on Periscope. Welcome to Tuesday Fish Talk Live with Ron Deemers. Tonight's going to be an awesome show. Uh, I just wanted to say what's up, what's up, what's up. So welcome to Tuesday Fish Talk Live with Ron Deemers. It's a multi-streaming show that is taking the social media by storm and jacking the fish keeping hobby to new levels while we blow up the socials. So we're streaming right now live on Facebook, Periscope. Uh, and now tonight we're also streaming on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, these streams can be found by searching for Ron Cichlids or Ron Demers on your favorite streaming platform. And when you find the show, make sure you subscribe to our channels. We appreciate the subs that you give us. And yeah, definitely on YouTube. If you guys can help us build up that channel, go to YouTube, do a subscribe. That really helps us a lot. So if you can do that. Our mission tonight or every night with the show is to create a live show experience just for you, our viewers. And for the clubhouse group members, uh, we're adding new segments, uh, sponsors, prizes each week. And tonight we've got a bunch of really cool stuff going on. This is going to be a pretty exciting show. Um, yes. if, you, if you love talking shop, checking out great fish and amazing tanks, then you're definitely in the right place. Um, my name is Dave Gould, and I'm the man in the control booth. I'm the one that's uh, doing all the graphics and everything. And I'm also the one that gets to introduce you tonight um, to our host. And tonight's a very special show because we've got a special guest expert on, and I'm going to let Ron do the introduction. But uh, without further ado, here we go. Here is uh, Ron and uh, our guest. So here we go. Welcome, Ron. What's going on? Good evening, everybody. Um, happy Tuesday. Um, glad to have you all here. Um, this is going to be a episode that everybody's been asking about, you know, we're going to go over fish health and, um, wellness. Um, I have a special guest today. He is, um, Heck, I'm bringing it. I'm sorry. I just can't get around there. All right. What? Oh, I got you um, right here. No, I was over. I was, I was looking at the other screen. Yeah. Um, 
You guys have seen him on the clubhouse. He's a member. Um, he chimes in a lot with his wisdom. His name is David Boger. Um, he is a degreed organic chemist, research scientist, consultant. Um, gentleman has 39 patents, now retired, and he feels for uh, better himself in the aquarium hobby. He's been keeping fish for, from what I've been told, 50 years. So you're going to be hard pressed to find anybody in a hobby who's been doing it that long and um, who's as intelligent as he is. So um, we're going to be talking back and forth tonight. And um, I'd like hey. to introduce David Bogart. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> hey, David, welcome to the show. Uh, it's really exciting to be able to bring somebody of your caliber and your knowledge and be able to share some of your expertise with our viewers. So before we get into that talk, let's go ahead and do uh, some of our mentions and shout outs. Who are you seeing online right now? Uh, James Miller, Mark Rolls, Kevin Thompson, Kimberly, Cindy, Lori, Gabriel, nice. Robert, David. Let's see Fred's on there again. What's going on, Fred? Yeah. So glad to have everybody on. The show is just uh, completely blowing up, Ron. As as you know, earlier uh, or later last week, I was giving you the totals for the numbers. And the Fish Talk Live show is turning out to be absolutely amazing. Uh, we're averaging about 3,300 viewers every week. Uh, we peaked at 5,600, I believe, in episode two. Uh, was our highest, um, but we're looking forward to that. We've got great relationships going with some some groups and some friends of ours on social media, so things are just uh, really blowing up. Um, I got a few mentions, so let's just pull get that um, out of the way. Um, as you guys know, I always show you this graphic. Here is the turn on live notifications graphic. So when you are watching the video, you can see this little bell. If you click on that bell, that will turn on. And then also, like I said, I was looking for... Uh, to try to see if I can get some, some people to bust over to YouTube, maybe not tonight or maybe after the show, and, and subscribe to the channel. That will really help things out a lot. Um, remember to go full screen. I put a lot of effort into the videos and graphics in this show, so they certainly look a lot better at full screen. And uh, share and like the show. You know, The more shares and likes we get, the more Facebook thinks, hey, there's something going on here and puts us in front of more people. And the more people, the more fun, right? So Yeah, more yeah. things I can give away. Yeah, exactly. So um, we are looking for call-ins for the show. Again, uh, uh, after our break, we're going to have live question and answer. David Bogert and Ron are both going to be available for live questions uh, after the topic, which is... Uh, I just keep thinking about the topic. Such an awesome topic. Um, <laughs> another uh, announcement really quick is, <laughs> you want to hear something funny, Ron? You're going to tell me anyway. I'm going to tell you anyway. So I keep hearing in my voice, remember how, so we get criticisms, right? On social media, everybody's, it's like a free pass to be a critic. And one, one of the criticisms was, less dave and more ron less dave more ron <laughs> it just made me laugh you know but that was what i was hearing right now hey look i got a job to do okay and i'm gonna do it but anyway so the call in for the show uh we want you to call in i have a graphic right here or i can show you we're gonna show you this graphic and when we do uh write the phone number down in the passcode so that you can call in um, all the episodes are now on the website too. That's the other big announcement. And that is if you go to the ronsicklids.com, there's a new menu item that says fish talk live. And I developed a really cool plugin that has all the episodes right there at once one shot. So if you're looking for the past episodes, um, here's uh, there's a few mentions here in red. That's for you, Ron. Remember? Um, if you guys have any questions or comments um please remember just to send it through um the ron cichlids page um and uh i'll get to it as soon as i can um remember we're broadcasting on youtube channel twitch facebook and periscope and um yeah and that we can talk about the social so one of the things that's different about ron's platform is that he is developing a kind of uh 
official Facebook groups. I just wanted to give some shout outs for that. That's Ron Deemer's Sickly Clubhouse. Awesome group. Some of the slower growing, but still very awesome groups is the Mbuna Hangout. We have the Lake Tanganyika Clubhouse, Ron Deemer's Aqua DIY, the Amazing Tank Showcase, which is one of my favorites. That's kind of like those tanks that yeah. you million dollar tanks. When you win the lottery. Yeah, when you win the lottery. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then also the New World Cichlid Hangout. Um, Ron's on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll show you those a little bit later. Um, there's two more. I'm trying to get past this so we can get to David. <laughs> David's be patiently waiting. Um, I have take a, care of the other one. I have a public right. public service announcement. I will. I'll have you take care of the last ones. Uh, okay. Public service announcement. I better say this because this is one of those that we're going to get blowback. People are going to be like, "Oh, Dave," but. Just think of it as Dave being your big brother, okay? <laughs> I've got your back. Okay, so whenever you're shooting video, whether it's your tank or your fish or testimonial or anything, do it sideways, horizontal or landscape. Vertical video is like super, super difficult to, e to edit, and it looks really this bad. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. this way. Yeah, yeah. So if we if we, if we we do a call out, and I'm trying to say this like in the best way because we just got a bunch of videos and a bunch of them came in vertical. No problem. We'll try to make them use them. But the best way to do it is horizontal. So that's pretty much that. Once again, this way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see this bald spot back here as I was pulling my hair out trying to edit those videos. All right. So you want to give out the group shout outs? Yep. Um, first group shout out is Southeast Fish Addicts um, by TJ Huffstetter. Um, I want to give a shout out again to our boys, uh, 420 Cichlids. Great group. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, they're just laid back. No drama like us. Very helpful group. Um, you got Mike Tuttle, Charlie Wood, Chris Hebert, PK Campling. Um, I want you all to remember this is an 18 and over group. Okay. So if you're not 18 years old, find another group. Yeah. Um, West Coast Cichlid Exchange, um, Isaac Garcia. Crown Royalty Cichlids, our very own Nathan Pate, one of our moderators. And Wicked OB Cichlids, uh, Stephanie Prudente. Um, he doesn't know what I wrote there. I was, this is, she's just like one of the hardest working admins out there. So we wanted to give a special shout to Wicked OB Cichlids. So, yeah. Thank awesome. you, Stephanie. Yeah. All right. So um, let's give a little preview of what we're talking about tonight, huh? All right. I like those graphics. Ooh, guest expert. Ooh. Yeah. I hate the word expert. <laughs> Okay, everybody. So here you go. Here is proclaimed expert. There you go. Here's Ron Dimmers and David Bogart, our our. I don't know how he was gonna say, it, but anyway, our expert of for tonight. And um, I'll let you guys just jump into. It. I'll turn turn over the show to you guys. I can't see my broadcast is interrupted, and I don't know why. I can't see how many people we've got. Fifty four okay. people. We don't, we don't need you anymore. That's okay. David and I. David and I got this. Go take a nap. I can. I I got the master. Nobody wants to hear from you, Dave. Hey, Ron. I got the master switch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I just we got fifty four on there, so we're we're trying to get to a hundred. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start it off then. All right, you ready? Yep. All right. So as I said, this is our special guest. His name is David Bogart. Um. We're going to have conversation tonight back and forth. I'm going to ask him questions and we're going to utilize his vast knowledge for a, um, for answers and opinions. Um, so let's start off with Dave. Can you, can you tell us all a little bit about yourself and your 50 years in the hobby and you know, what kind of fish you keep and. Well, the past 15 years I've been keeping, uh, only basically like a Malawi, Malawi. And uh, I keep mixed tanks, uh, 10 tanks. And uh, they're largely Mabunas, but there's also Haps and uh, the Peacocks mixed in there. And what I do, it's, it, 
you know, over 15 years, you got these 10 tanks and they've segregated themselves by aggression. <laughs> so if a fish gets super dominant, I move them up to. There you go. If a fish gets picked on, I move them down to. And I'm always adjusting and moving. Uh, and it's that's the fun of Africa. That's that's African cichlids. I call it a chess game. You always have yeah. to be moving somebody. I, I have fun. Oh, they're very colorful fish. I like them. And uh, for the past about a year or so now, I've been kind of, I did research as my, uh, for a living, and I've been researching aquariums and the science of aquarium, not the rumor mill, not what social media is saying, but what are the scientists and the universities who are studying agriculture actually finding out works or doesn't work in the university setting uh, by experimentation, not by, you know, I've been in the hobby 50 years. Guess what? All my experience, it doesn't mean anything. It's all what is known in science as biased anecdotal evidence. It doesn't mean a thing. Say that 10 times real fast. <laughs> yeah. It just doesn't mean a thing. And uh, there's been a lot of work done in agriculture. There's whole books written. I got probably 10 books up in my shelves here. And there's a lot of information in there. It really helps. So that's it. Next question. What is uh, what are the, some of the biggest changes you've seen in the in the last thirty to forty years, or or, or even the last ten years? Well, I think uh, there's been a lot of changes. Uh, the science has, has come along. You know, I started out with cycling. Nobody cycles a tank. Uh, change the water. I remember when old water was good water. Okay. I'm sure uh, information was hard to come by back then too. Oh, uh, yeah. You got these, these little books uh, out of your local fish store. Uh, looking, <laughs> I still got a few of them, and, and they're hilarious reading. You know, they're so inaccurate. The, gr the great thing that I've learned, though, is that Mother Nature is very, very flexible. I mean, there's a million different ways to be successful with an aquarium. It's, it's not this thing that, you know, you've got, a, there's a thousand different, don't ever do this or your fish are gonna die. No, nah, that's not true, okay? Uh, if your ammonia level goes up a little bit, it's not gonna hurt your fish. Uh, you know, it's, it, you know, this is not there. I see, uh, I see a lot of people get very reactive when something is ever so slightly what they think is out of whack. And what they don't realize is when they are reactive that way, they end up causing more harm than good by getting in there and messing with it. So, yep. Um, I've got a little ammonia. I'm going to clean all my filters. <laughs> another reason why we have, you know, forums and these talk shows to, uh, to help give knowledge so um so tonight's show we're going to talk about fish ailments wellness sickness stuff like that we can we can loop lump it up all you know any way you want but what are the major ailments that are the most prevalent you know these days in uh, the fish keeping hobby i know a lot of things have changed in the last 30 40 20 years but these days, because of social media, we have much more insight on what people are dealing with on a, on a, on a daily basis um, with their aquariums. Uh, well, the biggest one has always been it. Okay, and it, it remains the biggest one. Uh, I have a little cut and paste ick that I put up on social media, how to treat ick. And uh, I probably put it up there once a day. Uh, people get ick. That, that's very common. Uh, probably the second biggest one that I've seen is bacterial infections. 
And uh, that's serious. Uh, bacterial infections can kill a tank fast. Very fast. Yes. Before you even knew what happened. Yeah. And uh, I always have my, my Keniplex sitting in the refrigerator. I keep all my medications in the refrigerator, by the way. Keep them, keep them Mine away. don't last that long. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Yeah. And uh, so ick and bacterial infections, uh, if you've got a well-established, healthy tank with good, clean water, uh, those are really about the only two you have to worry about on a regular basis. I've got, was it uh, Levinasol for uh, tapeworms and, and flukes? I got some fluconazole for fungus and uh, oh, some other stuff in my refrigerator. I never use them. Yeah. I've never had the disease. Nope. I don't know why the hell I have them. The same way. Uh, and what people don't know is you also have a gram positive and a gram negative bacteria, and one medication treats one, and one medication treats the other. Yes. Uh, bacteria Popeye is, is a gram gotta be the worst. And uh, most of the rest of them are gram negative. Yep. And uh, people will buy erythromycin, which is for gram positive, and use it for the gram negative ones, such as Fenrot. And it won't work. Nope. And then something else, um, which I've been seeing just more and more and more these days, is uh, is an internal parasite. Um, you know, I think most of the time it's Hexmeda, but nobody ever knows for certain. But it's it's the same consequence. You know, fish gets a little bloated, gets a little lethargic, white stringy poop. You know, and if you've got white sand or gravel, you may never see that come out of the fish. But there's telltale signs, you know, that are usually involved with a with a, an internal parasitic um, infection. But I see that a lot, you know, in sunken belly. Um, I just recently went to someone's um, establishment. They wanted to give me some fish and um, he didn't know what was wrong with them. And uh, between sunken belly and them wasting away, um, it was very quick for me to to come up with a conclusion that it had an internal parasite. So we're on about three or four days now of treatment for those, and uh, that should fix them. But most people don't understand. They think, they think your fish are just skinny. They don't realize that there's a parasite inside of them consuming more calories than the fish can, can intake. Um, and then, of course, we've got you know, viral. Um, viral is, is just as bad as bacteria, but you usually never know what a viral infection is. It, it, I've seen it before, and I think I can call it bacterial, but it happens so quickly in less than a day. One day, everybody's fine. The next day, everybody's dead. Just don't know why. Um, Yeah, I, I rarely see a fungus except on a fish that's almost dead. Yeah, it's, it's got to be in pretty bad shape to get, to get fungus. Yeah, but real, real true fungus. Now, there are a lot of bacteria infections that have that fungus look. And if, if it's not real long and mounded and everything, it's not a fungus, it's a bacteria. Um, and I... The other thing that happens a lot is, is I do see a lot of fish that they die. Uh, you know, you get this fish in your tank and it's dead and there's no apparent reason for it. And that happens. Uh, about 50% of the time, that's uh, fish TB. And there's not a lot you can do about that. Fish TB happens. It, and for TB, he means sure. tuberculosis, by the way. Yes. Also, no, also known as wasting disease. Is that correct? 
Yep. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. everybody I thought I was. We didn't, on, we didn't touch on either, and we didn't even talk about this the other day, and uh, we still do see it. Not as bad as we used to, but hole in the head disease. Um, forgot all about that. You know, we we still see it. I mean, people don't. That's probably one of the most misunderstood ones. And um, something else, it's very easy to cure. I mean, I, I've easily been able to cure fish with it, but uh, poorly identified. I just figured I'd throw that out there while I was on my brain. Can you there. can you talk a little bit about those symptoms? So you've thrown a few of the diseases out. Like, what? How does that appear in the fish? Just like a quick quick uh, run down those with a quick. Yeah, Dave. Uh, let me go back to hole in the head for a second. Yeah, yeah. There's there's one that I've been seeing a lot in social media. And it's, it happens on African cichlids and on small cichlids. And it's little white tufts along the head in a pattern on both sides of the head, sometimes over the head of the fish. And it's these patterns of dots. And they, they come out from the fish, pure white, and they slough off every once in a while, and they reform. And that's actually hole in the head in small cichlids. It's, it's a, I call it canal neuromast inflammation uh, because everybody kind of gets all upset when you call it hole in the head. But it's, it's, uh, it's, it's an infection of the little sensory hairs that are on the head of a cichlid. Okay. And that, it's, it, it's becoming very common, and, and people get real upset about it. And you have to treat it just like hole in the head. You know, it's, it's uh, largely a water quality problem, compounded typically with some sort of underlying disease problem. And the whole, you, know, you get into this, which came first, the chicken or the egg, sort of a, arguments with hole in the head as to what the real cause is of hole in the head. And it, it, it gets all complicated and everything. It it's, really usually, it's usually due to poor water quality. That's been the history yeah. that I've seen with it. But um, we, don't, we don't see it as much as we um, – it's, it's very misunderstood. Um, but it's very easy to treat, in my experience, as long as you know what it is. It's like chicken pox. You know, you, you may scratch and you may have a scar, but you get better. Same thing. So – Speaking about clean water, let's um, let's talk about what are some of the causes. What what do we need to look for to identify whether a fish is starting to stray down that path where he is stressed or he's not feeling good? Then, what are some of the main contributors to knock their immune system down to allow them to get to the point where they're sick? Uh well, I, I always got, keep going back to cleanliness and water cleanliness, but it, a lot of people uh, confuse water cleanliness with water changes. Uh, I, I've got to do water changes three times a week to keep my water clean. Well, let's say you've got a 50-gallon aquarium and you've got 2 trillion bacterial cells in it. That's not a low, uh, high number, by the way. That's a, actually a pretty low number. Two trillion would be a pretty small number for bacteria because there's a lot of bacteria in water. And you do a 50% water change and you go from two trillion to one trillion, okay? That's not a big change, folks. That's still going to give a lot of bacterial challenge to a fish's immune system. That immune system, it, it could only fight so much at once. So you, you start down that road getting a problem. So if you over filter your tanks and you get this wonderful crystal clear water that I see in, in all the experts' tanks, you know, in my own tanks, okay? It's that water that looks like it isn't there. You've got that, you've got healthy fish. Okay, and it's, it's, it doesn't come about through water changes, it comes about through over filtering. Filter the hell out of that water, and you'll have healthy fish. Simple. 
Um, so we also have things like poor nutrition, um, fish not being fed a well-rounded diet, you know, something that's full of fillers and animal byproducts and everything else that causes issues. Um, aggression is, is probably with African cichlids, our number one contributor, which causes stress and everybody wants to blame fish oh i got a fish sick or he this or that listen you can't just dump fish in your tank and think everybody's going to get along there's different levels of stress and that stress knocks down their immune system and when you knock down their immune system you just open the door to any of these issues that we just talked about potentially happening mm -hmm. um or overall health and genetics is also sometimes an issue. Some people just keep the, the inbreeding and inbreeding and inbreeding, and there's fish that have poor genetics. They just don't grow. Um, for me, if I want a fish to grow, I'm in this business. And my history is um, feed them a couple times a day, good nutrition, um, water changes. The, the water changes are, are, are twofold for me. One, it's um, to replenish things, but for me, it's more or less, I've got a lot of fish growing up. It's to remove hormones. Um, the, a lot of my males will put out hormones and it'll subdue the other ones. Um, that's, that's something a marine biologist friend told me years ago, and um, I, I've seen it on groundwater farms where there is no filtration. 24 hours a day, brand new water coming out of Mother Earth, and um, fish grow like weeds, like weeds. Um. Well, so so Dave's here as the kind of I'm I'm the the one viewer that's here, right? And so I'm listening to it. So you guys are talking about different kinds of ailments. Uh, it's never any fun when our fish get sick. Um, and how they could be parasitic and bacterial. I'm hearing from you guys that sometimes it's just really difficult to know exactly what it is. Um, maybe for the average hobbyist, you guys can, you know, help us figure out what's the proper way to identify some of these. What are we looking for when the fish are sick um, to help get there? You know, Ron or David. So I'll break it down for Dave to basically answer. So Dave, if, if you think you've got ick which is easy we'll start off with an easy one what are what are we looking at basically uh. well ick, ick is always the easiest one because those white spots you know uniform size pins over the whole body that is so characteristic uh you you can't miss it and uh, the great thing about ick is that you know if, if i get ick in one of my uh big tanks I screw up somehow and I manage to get ick in one big tank. Uh, those fish are nice and healthy. And I'll, I'll take the temperature up and I'll throw some salt in and hey, it's not a big deal. I could probably get away with not throwing any salt in and not taking the temperature. And they're going to throw it off in a week or two. Very easy to treat. Easiest Very. thing there is for any Aquarius to treat. Easy. Yep. Now, if I have a quarantine tank, and I put these new fish in there and they're super stressed. Their immune systems are like hell because they've been shipped for 48 hours. And you know, it, it, that's a bad situation. You start getting ick in there, I medicate. I use copper, I'll, you know, uh, formaldehyde, malachite, green will work. But I'll, I'll medicate in that particular little subset of them. But you're doing that because they are very stressed out and potentially can't handle the extra heat and other methods that we would normally do for healthy fish. Yes. Right on. Mm -hmm. So while, while Dave's talking about quarantine, that's something we're going to talk about here probably in the show. But remember, we don't see it as much as we used to. The old days where you always quarantined a fish. I understand people don't have the space in their home or um, to, to have another tank for quarantine, but quarantine isn't necessarily a tank that's just there to treat the fish when they come in. It's an, it's an observation tank, basically. I don't know if there's a better way of saying yes. it. You need to observe them 
make sure everybody's eating, make sure everybody's getting along. Don't shove them all in a 10 gallon tank, put them in an ample sized tank so they don't freak out and get even more stress. But keep an eye on them for a little while before you introduce them to all of your other precious, precious fish that, you know, you can have a couple sick fish that are new fish and you can throw them in your tank and your tank is a hundred percent spot on. Like Dave says, clean water, fish are healthy. You can drop in two fish generally that may have an ailment and they, they won't infect the other ones because the other ones are too healthy. Um, a quarantine tank is, is realistically a, um, a great option for just about anybody. So let me try to focus you guys in again. So we're talking about, okay, so a, a lot of our viewers had say 50% are very, uh, uh, would be on the, don't have an expert knowledge like myself. I, I put myself into that category. You know, I'm always learning. So what are some, like, I mean, we're looking at our tank and, you know, some, some behaviors are not diseases. We see that on the social media where someone says that, you know, they're shaking and doing this weird stuff. No, they're trying to get it on, you know, <laughs> it's, it's all good there. It's all good there. Right? <laughs> turn some candles on, put some berry white on and <laughs> turn the lights down for them. But um, as far as getting back to identifying diseases, I, I know that color loss, help. scale health, uh, cloudy eyes, those kind of, talk a little bit about what we're looking for in fish. So you guys, I know y'all love your fish, but you know, you gotta, you gotta really pay attention to them to figure out what's going on. So telltale signs are fish is hanging out by himself, uh, clamped fins, um, cloudy eye, cloudy eye can happen from fighting or scratching. Um, torn fins, rip fins, any degradation in the fins, um, um, fish gasping at the surface or, or, or breathing very heavy, um, loss of color uh, all of a sudden, uh, won't eat. Uh, won't eat is a, a common one. That usually is letting you know, hey, knock, knock, something's not right with this fish. Um, other issues that you have are... Um, bloating. Um, and we'll talk about bloat later. It's very misunderstood. Most of the time it's not bloat. It's, it's some internal parasite or something causing that. Um, but you know, spots on the fish, like we talked about with ick or, um, you know, very, very rarely you may see a bacterial infection where you see some white on its nose or something, or you'll see red on its lip from fighting, but you got to pay attention to the fish's behavior. Usually, um, They'll let you know something's wrong. You know, the clamp fins, the stop eating, the seclusion. Um, these are usually telltale signs that there's something going on with that fish. So I think you got everything on the list except for the poo-poo. To the fish's butt for a little while. So if you've, if you've got a, 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 a clean bottom tank, no substrate, it's much, much easier. But on the very, very bottom of a tank or coming out of the fish, you will get a white inconsistent stringy poop basically um that's a telltale sign there is some type of um, um internal parasite hexmeda roundworm tapeworm any other worm i'm missing dave no those are those are the two main ones sometimes you'll sometimes a bacterial infection can give that that's an okay. infection of the intestines it's creating mucus okay yeah, uh, yeah. if it's bacterial it'll be white uh, sometimes if it's just internal parasites, it could be actually clear. I've yes, seen I've it. seen that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the bacteria tend to make it white. And again, you get into a, a horse and cart thing. If you got bacteria and an internal parasite, or do you have an internal parasite and bacteria, and which comes first? And you know, I typically treat for both. I treat for both yes. bacteria and uh internal parasites i i hit them i hit them with both barrels when when i treat fish i when i make up medicated food um and some of you guys have used my food it's it's not one ingredient it's i'm hitting it with paragard canaplex metroplex metro general cure uh focus garlic guard um a lot of vitamins uh epsom salt i mean i'm trying to hit Whatever I can, because I'm not 100% certain what's going on, but I want to kick its ass, whatever it is. <laughs> and, and oh, by the way, 
all of the things you just mentioned are very safe. Okay? They're all approved by the FDA for use in humans. Okay? Oh, wow. And That's if you're cool. using those, those medications for humans, uh, you know, and as prescriptions, you know they're safe for a fish. Uh, so, hey, have at it. Go a ahead. Lot of, you know, a lot of the medicines, like some of the ones you were mentioning earlier, the levimisol, the erythromycin, this is stuff that you buy for, you know, you can buy it for horses and dogs. Yep. And, I mean, this is just general uh, medication for just about anything that the living being, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so, I, so we're about a little over the halfway mark and I, I've just had this thought to my, in my head. I thought, you know, most of these questions are going to be leading towards what's next on our topic list. As far as treatment, a lot of these questions are going to, and you'll probably be able to hit a lot of that. So maybe we can carry the questions and answers and the rest of these, this on the topic over to that. I think that might work. Um, you know, before we go to the break, you know, obviously we uh, are looking for people to call in with their questions tonight. So if you would like to call in, um, let me show you what that graphic is. Grab a piece of paper real quick so you can write this down. It makes it a lot easier. Um, we have also got, uh, let's see. So let me go ahead and run that graphic real quick. Here's the call in graphic. Okay, so that's our graphic. That's our call in. I'm gonna pull that back. If you feel like, uh, if, <laughs> I almost said something like I was in a bar or something. Watch your mouth, dude. If if you're feeling, uh, uh, what's the right word? Um, confident, <laughs> and you want to call in, please do. Outgoing. We'd love to talk to you. Uh, you can ask David Bogert or Ron Demers uh, your questions tonight about disease. There's so much. We talked about, we had a little pre-planned meeting last night. We talked about how much uh, content there was going to be that this could just go on forever. It could be two episodes forever. or whatnot. So we're trying to do our best there. I do want to hit that medicated um, slide that we had before we go into the um, to the break um, on this, Ron, just give us a quick rundown of what it is and why you did it and, and how it can save people some money. So let me just do there. Go ahead, Ron. So, um, as some of you know, and some of you used, um, I do provide, I have a, a medicated food um, that I make um, just because the sheer amount of medication that you would need um, would run you probably $150 or more, um, and you wouldn't need it to that vast scale. So I, uh, I sell it eight ounces in a, in a pound basically, but it's, it's my food. And then in a liquid form, I, in a bottle you'll get is all these medications that I use. So I use, um, Seachem Focus, Seachem Canaplex, Seachem Metroplex, um, Seachem Paragard, API General Cure, um, Seachem Garlic Guard, um, and uh, Epsom Vita. Salt. I also use um, Vita some vitamins and mineral uh, and uh, liquid vitamins, basically as well. Um, and something I suggest for my customers who get this is, you know, when you get it, you know, if you get it, there's um, uh, an instruction sheet that tells you, you know, to mix it up. It's basically mixing mix in liquid ingredients with the of food and then it needs to be refrigerated or frozen um for any of you who have fish that are stubborn that don't want to eat um i suggest adding you know frozen brine frozen mesis or even chopped up krill to that mix to give it more of an enticing flavor to make them eat it but medicine works so much better when it's ingested it basically Almost none of it works if you think it's going to be absorbed through the skin or the gills. Um, we'll talk about that in a little while, but that's um, that's snake oil that it doesn't really absorb very well into the fish. So, um, so putting it into their belly makes a difference. So this is awesome. This is a way for 
uh, you to be able to save some money. So he sells it in a half pound and one pound. It's on the shop. Go to shop.roncichlids.com. Uh, look under food, medicated food. It's just a way to get a good batch of it and save a little bit of money. We're going to be right back. If you're, if you're wanting to call in, call in now. Okay, so start calling in now. Uh, we're going to be back in a short time, and we're going to go to straight live questions and answers. cichlids you guys his fish are awesome they're big beautiful vibrant i got a couple of them in here also his food his food is unreal they devour it they splash me for it that's the only bad thing i can say about the food is i get wet every time i feed them almost but five stars all around get a hold of ron roncichlids.com Okay, everybody, we're back. Uh, microphones are on. We do have a live caller. Uh, this is the time in which we'll do a live questions and answers. So go ahead and light that chat up. We'll, we'll try to pull some questions here to ask David Bogert and Ron Demers. Appreciate you guys. Awesome topic. You guys are really covering a lot of stuff and, you know, bringing the no nonsense approach to it, which is what I really like. Uh, there's just so much stuff. And like David, uh, you were saying, a lot of it's anecdotal. It's like one person's impression for that particular time of their tank. So anyway, it's good to hear that good information. We do have a caller online. Hello, caller, you're on. Who is this? Hello. Hey, who is this? Hey, this is Rob Kinsey from Indiana. Hey, Hi, Ron, Rob. David, Dave. Good evening, Hi. Rob. How are you, buddy? Good. Doing good. Uh, I just got a question for... Um, well, all three of you have worked for me even better. Okay, um, David, you said if you had ick in your tank and say you didn't add any new fish from anywhere, what led up to the point to, to get ick or just say sunken belly? Well, we got two different issues there, so. Okay, we'll just say ick, ick for example. And I do, and I have a question. Does playing with the temperature allow sickness to get in your tank. I know people adjust it for aggression, you know. At a certain point in the temperature, does that allow, allow sickness? Well, we, we got we to gotta rephrase that. There's allow sickness. It, these parameter changes could cause stress on the fish. Stress on the fish can open the door to other issues. It can be ick. Bacterial, usually not. Usually, from my experience, that tends to come from somewhere else. But if something like ick is very common. It's very easy to get um, if a fish is stressed out. And, and ick is really, really, really hard to completely get rid of. My, my phrase, and I've been telling people for years, and 
I don't know, Dave, if, if, uh, if, if this is your theory, but pick is always in your tank, whether or not your fish allow it to be on them is a, is, is a different scenario, but you can have a tank established for three years, add no new fish. And one day you can just get in. So you're saying like, depending on the, um, the immunity level, is that what you got? Yes. That, which yeah. goes back on what David said earlier, as far as water quality and the, and the health of the fish. So um luckily you know that's pretty easy to to take care of yeah actually it was there was a paper i ran across by diana wallstead uh who did the ecology of the planet uh, planet aquarium she's a very good researcher and she ran across 20 or 30 papers came out of southeast asia where they tested a whole bunch of different fish uh for all these different parasites. And they got in there with DNA, all these scientific pathologist things. And they found that ick was present in like 70% of the fish. And costia and ichabodia and uh, 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 roundworms, uh, all of these different diseases. Fish TB is present in 80% of the fish probably 100% of the tanks, you can't get rid of it. I mean, uh, university researchers have tried very hard to come up with these perfectly clean tanks that, you know, for doing their genetic studies, and they can't get them clean, okay? The stuff just floats in from the air. And uh, so, yes, there will be ick in, in most tanks when those... Those fish get stressed for some reason. Uh, it can blow up, and sometimes uh, uh, it just blows up. There isn't an apparent reason. There's no stress going on in the tank. Everything's fine, and you wake up one morning and you look over, and you got twenty fish that have it. Yeah. You go, what the hell happened? You well, don't know. One of the things I was listening to you guys talk about last night is sometimes how prevalent it is for people to misdiagnose. So especially yeah. with African cichlids, they're so aggressive. They're, you know, nipping at each other or whatnot. You know, just because a scale falls, this is what I, I heard you say last night, was just because a scale falls off doesn't mean the fish got ick. So to be really <laughs> careful, watch that. Um, so this time of the year, Rob, you got to be careful. You know, you're, you're, you, you live in a cooler environment. If you're going to do water changes, be careful. Don't, don't be dumping 78, you know, degree, uh, uh, you know, 68 degree water in a tank that's 78. Um, don't try to do anything too drastic. Um, and, and then properly identify what's going on and, um, and just try to fix it. Um, internal parasite, you had mentioned internal parasite and ick. Um, don't let what we're talking about scare you into thinking your tank is going to always be sick. Um, it's our job to identify when something is not feeling well and try to help them. Um, if you don't know what's going on, reach out to somebody that you trust who knows what they're talking about, and we'll try to help you. Awesome. So glad you called oh, in. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I wanted you to go ahead and say what you were going to say. I was going to say glad you called in. Uh yeah, I, I mean, I just worry a lot, you know. I've I've never dealt with it yet, but I have seen it in fish stores, and I, and I was wondering if it was. And I do live where it's cold, and my fish tanks are at eighty two. That doesn't mean that my water stays that way throughout the whole day if it adjusts up and down constantly. That's fine. I I have my fish outside in Florida. They may see forty six to the other day was ninety three. As long as it's in small increments up and down, it's fine. Just can't do a big change all of a sudden. It's just the same thing with us. If I took you out of your element and dropped you in Jamaica, you may get sick because it's it's just a complete different environment for you. So it is really easy to treat. If you ever get it, it is absolutely the easiest thing that you could ever treat in a, in a fish tank. It's crazy easy. Thanks a lot, Rob, for calling in. Uh, thanks for calling into the show. And uh, we'll see you on the I, group. Thanks, I Rob. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. You too. All right. Take care, man. 
So the next caller is going to win fifteen grand. Uh, no, excuse me, wrong show. I, I always do I'm going to call. <laughs> yeah. What is up with everybody? Why are you so shy to call in? Anyway, I lost my iPad, Ron. One of the last questions I saw was a little bit about sunken belly. What do you do? What First things you do, what do you go to? What's your, what's your procedures? David, Ron, if you want to chime in on that, sunken belly. Uh, yeah. Uh, sunken belly. Sunken belly all by itself. Uh, it can be a lot of different things. It could be fish TB, it could be uh, internal parasites. Uh, malnutrition. Malnutrition, yes. Uh, Email that's been holding for three weeks. Yes, a lot of different things. So I look for other things. Is there a razor back, uh, this thin back? They're a little hollow above the eye, okay? Uh, is there uh, an ulcer here or there? Those indicate fish TB, okay? And, and I have some fish in my tanks that they have hollow belly. They've had hollow belly for years. Uh, they've got fish TB and they live with it. Uh, sometimes they even get better. Uh, it's, it's you know, that's part of the way fish TB works. Not an automatic death sentence. And uh, if they're healthy fish, they can sometimes come back from it. And sometimes they just live with this kind of hollow belly look to them. So, okay, so, so, yeah. so sunken. But, but sunk, there is a first line of defense yes, either way. With the sunken belly, yeah. then you want to analyze what you're feeding them, probably, first off. Well, and, and the other thing that, to look at is, is, did it come on fast? And do you have more than one fish? that it came on fast with. If, if you've got hollow belly that suddenly show up in three fish, you've got internal parasites. There you, you need to get there you some go. medicated food into them. There you go. Okay, uh, that's, that's serious. They die from that. And okay. then something people don't realize is if it's bad enough, they will stop eating. And when they stop eating, it's a death sentence. I know there's a few of you that have tried pipettes and you may have had success, but the reality is if the fish isn't going to eat, my experience is it's, it's, it's on its way out. You've got to get them eating first before you start hitting them with a bunch of meds. You got to start giving them some maybe mesis or krill, something. You got to get them eating again before you can try to give a medicated food to, to, to help them out. Okay, so I, I, again, I'm still paralyzed. The iPad's just now coming back up. I'm trying to get back to the live show. I'm trying to find some questions here. Are there any questions that you guys saw? Let's answer some a couple more questions here. You, you were going to talk about bloat, weren't you? Yeah, I'm, I keep getting some about cloudy eye, too. So cloudy eye is like ick. Very, very easy to treat. Clean water. Yeah. Here's the reality. Cloudy eye is going to happen. Clean water. I like stress coat. Me, I've been using stress coat for 25 years. It works. I buy it by the gallon jugs. I only use it when I ship fish or if I need to treat one. Clean water, some stress coat, or no stress coat. That's your call. But clean water will clear up that cloudy eye usually. Now, I know, David, you're going to say um, you can also get that from bacterial, and that's a true statement. I, but I think most of the time we see cloudy eye from aggression or Shipping in a bag, they scratch their what is that cornea or iris or something? What is yeah. that? I I don't see a lot of bacterial. No, no. I you know on rare I, cloudy eye. I don't I don't pay a lot of attention to it. It generally just kind of goes away. Yep. Uh, don't, I don't worry about it too much. Popeye, that's a whole different story. Yes, I don't, I don't see it much in the hobby anymore, but it, it's still relevant. Yeah, I, I get it every once in a while. I, I had uh, one fish and <clears throat> came from Walmart or something. Uh, no, it didn't come from Walmart, but one of the local it stores around. Off. And I had, yeah, no, I don't. I, I had him and he had this this eye. I was like, God, that looks like it hurts. But anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I flushed him down the toilet. But anyway. Um, I also got a question about flashing and. Um, 
just because fish flash doesn't mean they've got ick or gill flukes or mites. After a water change, fish do that. Listen, I've told you all a million times. A fish tank is a fish prison. They got nothing to do in there all day, but wait for you to feed them. If they want to flash or they want to scrape across things, if they want to pick on somebody or they want to eat gravel or tear up your plants, it's like giving a dog a chew toy, man. It's just to give them something to do. You know, it's, yeah. it's not always telling you something's wrong. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I, we were having fun with the laser and our big 11 inch Oscar. He dives and like bur buries his face in the sand. And my girl was like, oh, don't do that. That's mean. I'm like, what else has he got to do? He doesn't have a female in there with him. He's just there every day staring at the intake, you know. But have you ever done that, David? Take a uh, laser pointer and go on the sand in the tank and, and watch the fish. No. <laughs> oh, you got to try it, man. They're, they're worse than a cat. You know how the cats chase the laser? Yeah, bit? sure. I've done it with cats. You got to do it to the fish, man. It'll blow your mind. You'll laugh like a little kid. I guarantee you. <laughs> They'll go ape shit, man, trying to get it. They're try they will. <laughs> so just. Never of that. Yep. So just. I like that. You know how many people are probably going to do that tonight after they hear us talking about it? Oh, yeah. Put a mirror ball in your tank. Watch that. Watch them go nuts. Anyway, so we're, just like every week, we have a live chat that's off of Ron Cichlid's clubhouse. Welcome to join us tonight if you have any further questions. Um, or you can reach out to uh, Ron. Um, I don't want to throw David out there, but if you see David around, and David's been answering a lot of questions, we appreciate you for that tonight, yeah. David. Thank um, you. thank you so much for being on the show. We are going to give some stuff away. Uh, we've got this a little bit more, um, to get through and, and do that. I don't think we hit a hundred. We were about 75 this week. I think Christmas time, Ron, we're going to see that, you know, people are going to be more and more busy. I know my girlfriend's at a, at a Christmas party tonight. So we're probably might not hit that hundred mark, but Hey, there's still a large, beautiful show fish available. Uh, if you hit it on the wheel. So um, let's go ahead and I'm going to uh, throw up the member video of the week. Um, this week we have Michael Klein. So here's his video. Nice take, Michael. Um, I've always uh, always admired some of the pictures. Uh, that one there is, uh, is breathtaking. Um, Nice clean water. That's what David was talking about earlier. When you look in a tank and you don't see water, you know you're doing it right. Um, it's a beautiful nice. fish in there. It's just so many. Um, and, I, and I like that open design. We talked about that last week. I, I like it where there's, where you can see the fish and, and it's not cluttered up. Um, I like that. I like Go ahead. Pothos. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I see the pothos growing in the back. I've got a, some of that in my tanks outside. And boy, if you think you can grow in the dirt, put it in a fish tank, buddy. Because the roots just, uh, they grow like weeds. I think it's great. I was looking at, it looks like a Maison Reef or the, the Ambuno, the mostly white but really dark stripes there. He's kind of middle, top left there, middle now. Beautiful. That's a, uh, that's a uh, white top. Hat. Right here, he's on the very left over there. I'm pointing at it. Okay, Dave, come back to reality. I'm pointing at my screen, thinking Ron's seeing what yeah, I'm pointing. Yeah, pointing at your screen, brother. But anyway, I see Vanuatu and Ali and, um, and OBs and some deep waters in there. I see an exo antigens in there, um, and Cygnus in there. Beautiful fish. So um, thank. Some yep sorry so thank you so much michael uh congratulations you get an extra entry if you are on and you're a viewer why don't you uh type in the chat that you're on there so that uh, rebecca could add to you name as an extra one if that's what we got so um some people were like you know hey ron's giving away a whole bunch of cool stuff yes he is let's look at this thanks ron cichlids for the secam title 55 that I got in the raffle. Now the biggest problem is what tank to put it in. Well, everybody, this is Nathan Pate down here in North Carolina, Crown Oil and Secrets. Um, just want to thank Ron a whole lot. He was new Python on one of the two today last week. And um, just want to let you know, you got some great food, some awesome fish, 
Hey, it's an awesome dude. I really appreciate it, Ryan. Thank you. Hey, guys, this is Ryan. This is my son, Jake. This is my daughter, Rosalie. We just wanted to give Ron and Dave a big shout out and thank you for the fans and for the drawing and for the show. And I hope everybody enjoys the show tonight. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So it is that time again, folks, to give some stuff away. We're going to spin the wheel tonight. The way that works is that I'm going to type in here. I'm going to pull this back. So the way we, we way we do this is I'm going to go ahead and type in uh, when, to, when to type the word spin into the chat. Um, that's going to happen. I'm going to play a song during that. You have to get it in during that song, and then I close it. Let me give you a little bit. I have a little thing here. Bear with me. Um, the rules for our... There it is. So the giveaway rules of this is that there is no cash value implied. That if you win a prize, then you need to claim a prize. You must be present on the live to claim the prize within one minute or we're going to redraw. So we hope you're there. That way it's fair for everybody that's here on the show. Because this giveaway is really about those viewers that are on the show. Uh, some prizes may require shipping, although we haven't had that yet. Uh, but that's just a, a general rule that we have for into the future. And each person may only win once per month. So if you won during uh, the month, you are ineligible until the following month. Um, so since this is the first one of the month, everybody is eligible. And I'm going to go ahead and type in... Oh, yes. And Rebecca is always reminding me. So a special thanks to Rebecca Dunn. Rebecca Dunn is our live chat moderator, and she is the one that's also helping us keep these winners. So when I say to type the word spin, only do it one time. And why don't we do this since... Um, no, no, no. I, we kept talking about uh, disqualifying people if they did do it twice. But I don't ever want to get there, Ron. What do you think? So um let's no, just uh let's just be fair to everybody just yeah, enter yeah. At once, yeah just enter one time okay so here comes that music and i'm gonna go ahead and type that um all right so i gotta type in here type spin and then everything below there from my name down below and we've got exactly about two minutes a minute and a half or something so go ahead and type that now type it type it type it do you want to win you want to win a fish I do. I do. I never get a chance to win. Wait. And just so y'all know, we have one master list that we go by, and that's off of Ron Sicklet's page. Uh, that's how we calculate this. Go ahead and enter. If you haven't typed it in, you're going to draw a lucky name. I'm going to type the word closed now into the chat. So any, everything past that, please add Gabriel in there. He got in there right after mine. Let's go ahead and bring us up here. Okay, so they're going to find out who, uh, how many have entered, and then we're going to do the random generator, then we'll do the spin to win. So in that time period is when we're going to show the fish of the week. So go ahead and tell us about this fish that you picked out, Ron. One of my, my favorites. Um, I'm kind of impartial to albinos. I know a lot of people like albinos. A lot of them don't. But um, this is an albino sunburst peacock. Um, these little males are stunning. I mean, absolutely breathtaking when you look at them. They're around three and a half inches. The, the blues and the pinks and the oranges and the, oh, they're just, just beautiful fish. Um, they've been breeding like crazy lately. They've got like three or four females holding in the last couple days. And uh, we've uh, 
we've gotten some nice warm weather and they're just they've been on fire the last week or so what's um, the name of the fish again ron albino sunburst peacock it's a hybrid that was created a long time ago there's quite a few places that have them there's there's different color variations and strains of them but um this strain here that i have i like the most they've got a lot of like dragon blood yet like a sunshine mix in there they the the it's hard to see in the video but when the light just hits them right the the pinkish platinum that's on their shoulders and that iridescent platinum white that's on their face is just uh, amazing yeah I, I can almost looks blue i can tell you that it is kind of a hard fish to find so i was looking usually i do this graphic overlay for the fish of the week and it was very difficult for me to find good quality uh, images of this fish so and what size are those in the in there now these guys these guys here are right close to three and a half inches um nice. for, and for that size that's unheard of to be that amazing um i've kept them species only and um uh, raised them since they were little and um just on fire i mean if you if anybody's looking for females to reach out to me i've got several females holding right now yeah i think i want to get one of these it's awesome so really the pretty. fish fish of the week uh, ends up on your shop, Ron, and uh, I believe we are. Uh, I'm not sure um, what the promotion is. You want to tell us what that is? How we're going to do that? Um, I think normally when we do fish of the week, it's 25 percent off. Um, I do have limited quantity of these guys. Um, I think I have four left. So um, first come, first serve. Um, and like I said, if anybody's looking for females, let me know. Um, I can get you a good deal on females as well. Okay, so in the shop, it will be week six, fish a week. It'll be the code. I'm going to go ahead and post that into the chat and then into the group. Um, I think they're normally $28. So, you know, 25% off. Seven bucks, 20. You're, you're looking one. at like uh, seven, seven. Yeah, you're looking around 20 bucks. 21 bucks, yeah. So that's a great price. And, um, yeah. I actually do think that I, I, I've been saying in my tanks when people look, I, I got enough albinos. I got two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, but this one I'm uh, seriously considering. I like the sheen, really the platinum pretty. sheen to him. Okay. So that's going to be in the shop. We do have a number, uh, official number is, uh, 27. So we're going to go ahead and go to the random generator. Bear, All right. bear with me one second, please, while I pull that up. We only had 27 people type spin? Uh, apparently. Well, that's good odds. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So it's here, a good here, number, but it's good odds for the people playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's, here's 27. Uh, that includes one extra for Michael Klein. You answer that real quick, Rebecca. One extra. Oh, I forget. She's 90 seconds behind. Here it comes. She's telling me. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, uh, yeah, lots of them are late. So um, it's going to be 28. Michael Klein, it'll be the... Uh, 28. All right, so here's the number. Here comes the number right here. Let's go ahead and random generate so we can see that up a little closer. 28 is the number, and we're going to generate. And the person that's going to spin to win, <coughs> excuse me. Let's try this the right way. One is the minimum. 28 is the big one. All right, and now we're going to generate that number, and it's number seven. So Lucky number seven. if you all can, if uh, Rebecca, you can tell me who number seven is, and I'll pull up the wheel. So let me explain how this wheel works. Let's go to the wheel here. Found it. All right. So here's our wheel. And if you see right here, this uh, black bar right here is a grand prize. That grand prize today is, Ron? Oh, what should we have for the grand prize today? How about a fish? Okay, nice. Large fish. So it'll be one large fish if you hit that grand prize. The person that is the lucky winner is James Miller. James Miller. Hey. 
Congrats. Yes, awesome. So let's see what this guy wins. So let's do this randomness. I'm going to ask you, give me uh, how many seconds, Ron? Tell me how many seconds you want this wheel to spin. Four. Four seconds? Okay. And then um, apply those. And then tell me uh, a number on the clock of uh, where to start this grand prize. So give me a number, 1 to 12. Uh, 11. So let's put that black circle right here at a roughly 11 o'clock on there. There it is. When I let go, it's going to spin for four seconds. Come on. Congratulations, James. You won one pound. Your choice of Ron Cichlid food free of charge. He's going to ship it out to you. Contact him through the Ron Cichlid's Facebook page. Make sure he gets your, your number and all that, and he'll send that out. Okay. So, Congratulations, James. Okay. So um, are we done with this, Ron, or do you want to what – what's going? Uh, let's spin again. Screw it. I'm feeling, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling in a good mood. All right, so here we go. We're going to pick out another number. I'm going to need you to tell me who this person is right here. Let me just refresh the page. All right, and let's do this random generator. We definitely want to give a fish out. So that's 1 through 28. I could really mess with Rebecca and say 1 through 50 or 60 through. <laughs> never mind. <Is> give, every, give, everybody, too much. give everybody a double. Okay, so 1 through 28. No way. <laughs> uh, that happening? Six. Well, it, yeah, it, we've already said it. You can't win twice in a month. You've already won. And so we're going to. I mean, just saying, yeah. just a chance of a random generator doing even the same number twice. Yeah, I'm going to call up random.org. I'm going to call Google. Hello, Google. <laughs> They'll take your call. Yeah. Hello, Google. All right, so number 26. Who's number 26, Rebecca? Okay, while we're waiting for that, let's go ahead and uh, set our randomness on this. Uh, give me another one. Uh, three through 15 seconds. Three. Ron. What? Okay, so I'll pick the number. I'm, we're going to let it spin for 12 seconds this time. Oh, okay. And then... Yeah, that's fine. And then you can go ahead and tell me here on the wheel what that's going to be. I can't get it to three. <laughs> it locked up on me. So here we go. It's starting at number seven. This is going to be a fish. Come on, fish. Come on. It's got, the, it's got some mojo. Come on. Oh, my gosh. You want a T-shirt from Ron Cichlids, and that is going to be Daniel. What's the last name on Daniel? <sighs> Dan Daniel, if you're hearing us, if your name is Daniel and it turns out to be the right Daniel, we also need to see that you're in the chat to be able to, to win. In other words, we're going to spin it again. I didn't see a Daniel either. Daniel Bodu, B O D I U. But I, sorry. Oh, I think he's the one that's in some other country. Okay, so uh, Daniel, light it up, Daniel, if you're there. Yeah, James does need to play the lottery tonight. Let me go ahead and bring back a a uh, all of us here again. I just want to say. Uh, thank you so much, David, for being on the show. Yes, thank you, David. Yeah, it's really it's really cool, and it's you know it's great to see how this um, pulls up. I still didn't see Dan. There's Daniel. There he is. Okay, so Daniel, you want a free T-shirt? We'll go ahead and contact you on how to do that. Um, that's probably the one prize that we can do out of the country. <laughs> so something's going on. But anyway, getting back to you, David, uh, thank you so much. Uh, your expertise is always just such a blessing in the Facebook groups and for all of the viewers here. Um, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and sign out here. Ladies and gentlemen, Fish Talk Live is on every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, I don't have that in front of us. Do you remember what next week's is? That's the one aspect of the show I keep forgetting. 
What are we doing what next week? Is that I, we're doing something on? Um, it's either going to be photography or or decor or something. Aquascaping or Aquascaping. something, and then yeah. uh, that'll be our 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 last show until after the holidays. Let me also let everybody know that we are not going to have a show Christmas on Christmas. So we're going to skip that week completely. There'll be two more shows, and then we're going to skip that one. And then it turns out that the next show is New Year's Eve. No, excuse me, New Year's Day. And I think we're going to push that one to the Wednesday. So that will be the first and only Wednesday Fish Talk Live. So once again, thanks a lot, David. And thank you all for tuning in and viewing. We'll see you next week. Uh, leave the final word for you, Ron. Um. Well, something I want to make sure I get out there because we didn't get it out um, while we were talking is um, for any of you who are dealing with the disease, please be sure that you do not cross contaminate from one tank to another. Do not use the same net. Do not use the same hardware. Do not move one thing to another tank. Um, it's very commonly overlooked, but that simple little fish net will bring your disease from one tank to another. So try to have separate nets for separate tanks if you think you have a disease. So other than that, thank you very much, everybody, um, for tuning in. Thank you very much, David, um, for your expertise and your insights. I was happy to have you. Um, um, you are a wealth of knowledge, and we appreciate you very much. Good. Thank you. Awesome. See you all next week. Bye, guys. Of course, the closer's not.